What's up, Candy Lickers? Pleased to meet you. Nice to know me. What you doing? You're listening to another edition of Cassio's Cut. I am, of course, your host, Cassio, and I'm joined. I'm a very special guest today. Rock and roll icon. I can see it. I can see it. Des Rocks is in the house. What's up, hey. my man? How you doing? Live from the lair in New York. I'm excited. <laughs> this is a transit mass transit closet, the dungeon. What's happening here? This is actually my new layer, and it's across the street from a cemetery in Brooklyn. So it's kind there of you go. an even trade. An <laughs> even trade. Yeah. New scenery. Now you get to see the dead people. For sure. Yeah, it's good because good, I don't get a lot of noise complaints, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, switch layers in pandemic before? What's happening? Yeah, in New York, you really don't have a spot for more than a couple of months. You kind of find a little place, and it's too good to be good, too good to be true, and you get kicked out, and then you wind up somewhere else. So this is where I am now. <laughs> All right, I gotta, uh, I gotta go back to when I discovered you. Uh, if anybody listens to this podcast, my regular listeners will know uh, we are heavily involved in wrestling, and I'm watching Survivor Series 2018, and here comes this badass jam as they come on the air. Oh, yeah. And you have the theme song to Survivor Series 2018. Were you a wrestling fan? How did this get hooked up? What's happening? You know, I was a wrestling fan as a kid uh, because I just loved kind of like goth imagery. And I was so drawn to the backstories of like The Undertaker and Mankind. And it <laughs> yeah. was just like it was so larger than life to me and so escapist. And I genuinely believed these things. I genuinely believed Mankind lived in a boiler room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even when I knew everything I knew about wrestling as I got older, I just like, I was like, wait, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's got a home, you know? And I, it just like, I was very into that as a kid. The key yeah. though is maybe he doesn't. You still had to go, he might do it. Yeah. And like, I never really watched any interviews with any of these guys like out of character. Like, so I just think of them as they are, you know? Uh, yeah. And then of course, I mean, that had to hit, let me live, let me die. That had to help the explosion of that song right when you release it right oh for sure so many comments you know I, I found this wwe survivor series all that kind of stuff yeah it was it was killer to be exposed to a bunch of new people that way uh so now you've got the that was 2018 uh you let the vultures in uh now you have just released this is our life uh if anybody listens uh to the show to the radio station i'm on rocket 95.1 uh, we've been playing a few songs uh, from the last few albums. Tell us about putting out an album during a pandemic. How was this different, say, from that 2018 Let the Vultures In? How was that different putting this album together? You know, for me, there's not many differences because I'm just constantly ch working on music and I'm always just trying to evolve the sound as quickly as I can and always push and push. So the fact that I couldn't tour or anything like that, it didn't really play into it too much because I'm always looking to release music. You know, okay. for me, it's like a very hip hop mentality to rock music, which is just constantly putting it out. You know, I make it here by myself, sitting alone in this room, you know. So if I want to write something today and put it out in three weeks, why not? Like, that's the times we live in, you know. Yeah. You've got the EPs uh, that, you know, five, six songs each. You've trickled out. um Wayne and I know, which by the way, were silent bangers. I like the beats on those. You just trickle those you. out a little bit. You, you are much. you are rock, uh, but I you know, you've got a blend of all different sounds. If you go through your catalog, um, you know, if you if you want to compare you or say a sound to new people, I think it's a little bit of Muse and the Blue Stones and Royal Blood, and then I sense just a little bit of the Elvis vibrato in there going back. Uh, so, yeah. what I mean, what are your influences when you got into this? What made you go into music? I'm tremendously influenced by Elvis Presley, uh, yeah. by Queen, by music that is larger than life and at all times adventurous. That, to me, is the biggest thing. Like, you go to a Queen concert, I'm sure, long before my time, and you were just enthralled. You were in this show. It was an escape and for me, like artists like Queen, who have so many weird songs that are kind of like objectionably <laughs> bad that you don't even know about, that you and I don't even know about, <laughs> you have to go through all those weirdos and all those misses to get a Bohemian Rhapsody. You know, you don't just play it safe for 10, 20 years and then all of a sudden write Bohemian Rhapsody. You know what I mean? Right. Like you have to always be taking these big swings. And that to me, like artists like that, who have that mentality, that guides everything I do. 
he got a little bit of uh, muse in the same vein of, and it kind of goes back to maybe the wrestling part is there's very much a showman presentation to it. It's not just here's my music, but it's a whole presentation and and the theater that is with you, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I worship these early 70s videos of Elvis. Everyone goes, you like Elvis? Go, yeah. And they go, 50s Elvis. All right. I go, I go no. <laughs> early 70s Elvis. When he is on the verge of life and death. And at any moment during that show, he might collapse and die. And he's popped up on painkillers. But at the same time, at the same time, Cassidy is the most thrilling male entertainer that has ever lived. You know what I mean? Still looking good. He's still got the suits. He's yeah. got the, show, the entire stage show. That to me is edgy. People go, oh, you got ripped jeans. You're edgy. I go, no. The word edgy, what it means is at the edge of life and death. And people forget that. Ooh. You know what I mean? Like that's where it comes from. And people have equated like a studded belt with edgy. No, it's it's about <laughs> maybe every show, playing every show like it's your last. You know, that to me is my, my well of inspiration. Speaking of playing a lot of shows... Uh, if you look at your tour, you don't have anything on the calendar of October. Has that changed? Uh, Is it still October? Officially, I don't have anything on the calendar. Okay. Well, let's just say I got some things on the calendar. So have you have you have you snuck a show in anywhere since pandemic? Are you still on the dry spell? <sighs> I don't know Legally. what what I'm allowed <laughs> to say. Uh, me and the boys, we get in here and we play a lot. And I'm all about keeping the band red hot because the last thing I want to do is get back on the road and have it feel like I haven't played in a year. So we'll just right. jam for hours and hours. And actually, it's kind of freeing because we're always preparing for shows and tours. And it's good to just explore and get weird and jam around. And uh, it's like we're kind of like finding a new sense as a, as a three-piece now. It's great. You you made me a little mad. I'm going to be honest. Well, I, I tried to search for a new artist and I couldn't find anything. This mysterious Cobra that you had a song with. <laughs> and I'm like, I, this guy came in. I don't know what he's contributing to the song. I didn't hear him on vocals. Maybe he created the beat. Yeah. And then this video trickles out of you going, well, I'm the Cobra. And yeah. I now, am I, the, I think I'm the only follower of the Cobra on Spotify. I'm a little bit <laughs> more fit. <laughs> I didn't even know the Cobra had his own Spotify page, man. That's crazy. That's not You got to start sneaking out the Cobra songs. Yeah, man. I mean, like, it's. I don't know. I don't know what was into that. <laughs> well, just tell everybody the cover. You, you know, it's like an alter ego. Yeah, man. It's. I just have so many different parts of my soul. I think people are very complicated, and uh, we have lots of different parts um, and different places we draw things from. And for me, I just wanted to experiment with some different things on that song, and have a featured artist. Like you know, that's when I first started. I couldn't get anybody featured on any of my tracks. I was like, this is. <laughs> This is featuring my own alter ego. Yeah, and I didn't really tell anyone that for a while, too. People asked who it was, and I was like, ah, he's just some guy in Brooklyn. He's a fucking moron. Yeah, you know, but like... (laughs) And now he's super cool. I was like, I need to find the Cobra bad. Yeah, man. No, that's crazy. No one's ever brought that up before. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Talk about uh, these new YouTube videos you got to do uh, here, I guess, as we are starting to kind of open back up, but these stripped down, kind of acoustic with just two backup singers. Talk about how, how exciting that was. Yeah, these are people who I've been singing with for many, many years, and they're close friends of mine here in New York. And, uh, you know, everyone's always asking you to play acoustic, do this acoustic. And it's like, I don't think acoustic. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm not an acoustic guy. I don't like acoustic guitars. I don't, you know, it's just not something I'm really into. I'm, I need to be, like, doing a backflip off a kick drum to feel like anything at all. <laughs> uh, so for me, uh, someone wanted me to do a bunch of acoustic videos. So I go, okay. Uh, how can I do this in a way that still has the emotional punch that I want to deliver? Um, so I just had a 12 string and I played it as hard as I possibly could. And my fingers were bleeding by the end of the day. And, uh, I just had these two girls and I said, just fuck, just sing with me, just scream with me at whatever it is, let it out. And they were vibing and it was a lot of fun. I think they're super beautiful. It's great. It's still rock and roll, but yeah, like you said, it's stripped down emotional. Uh, they could check that out on your YouTube um exciting things man i know you're excited to get back out there i know you're excited for the new music and share it in front of i mean that's got to be a uh well you tell me what kind of feeling is it when you've got this new music but this is the first time you have not been instantly on the road as this music comes out yeah i mean it's going to be a kind of twisted game of show and tell you know (laughs) Uh, like what do you bring in the class everyone's got to be bringing their best stuff after they had a year and a half to make it uh so it'll be a unique experience to say the least 
All right. Uh, we're going to hand uh, with the countdown. We're going to get into the countdown. I ask every guest 10 questions, 10 to 1. Uh, rapid fire, or as long as you want them to be. They are anything in between. Just whatever comes from the heart. Uh, we'll start with number 10. Name something that's a perfect 10 in your life. Dogs. Yeah. Do you yeah. have dogs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many? I got two. I got one right now. What, do you, what kind of dogs do you have? Uh, we have a husky, Lulu. She's 12 years old. And then we have a pit bull named Hank. Oh, that's a great uh, He's dog. He's just turned three. We also have a cat, 10 chickens, a snake, a lizard, and a spider. So if you got, I mean, that's like we bought a zoo status right there. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're stuck with your wife in pandemic, you just keep giving her animals. That's what I figured out. And that distracted her from the fact that I just sat at home and played video games all day while she worked. Something makes me think that you might have a little bit more space in Alabama than I do in New York City. I'm just yeah, kidding. when I read you were in a transit closet, I was like, yeah. uh, we need some acreage uh, is what we need from yeah. uh, Desra. You, that's what you need to do. Get down south and we'll let you just sit on a farm for like a day and see what comes to you. That sounds nice. The only grass I see has dead people in it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, it's well, it. it's the South. I can't promise there's no dead people. On the <laughs> there you, go. you won't see them. They're not marked. You're good for that. <laughs> All right, number nine. Uh, nine, the German word for no. So name something you wish was no more. This could be big, major, small, pet peeves, anything you wanted. Man, something you wish was no more. <sighs> Man, maybe now, I should have looked at the questions before. So we've had – no, we've had – uh, you know, bad drivers. We've had people that stand up as soon as the plane lands. Uh, we had, you know, of course, COVID was heavy for a little bit. So anything that kind of irked you, you know, a Twitter trolls, anything, you get rid of anything. Social media, all of social media, all of it, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. But you look like, you look like you embrace Instagram though. Yeah, I do. But I wish I didn't, you know, <laughs> I wish I stayed a truer path. I wish I, uh, I don't know. There's something about all it could kind of burn you out a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. Uh, I have. I'm. I wish I could like answer this question tomorrow because I'm gonna have some fun shit. But yeah, right now <laughs> I just have like. When a you think of them, tweet me, and I'll just. <laughs> I will. I will. All right, uh, number eight. Uh, what do you want your last meal to be? What's the last thing you ate when you go out? So you can mix and match from restaurants, home cooking from somebody. Um, Whatever it's going to be. I want top to bottom. A desserts. We got apps. What are you drinking? I want the deal. I would have a Hellboy slice from Paulie G's in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. It's an incredible slice of pizza with pepperoni and hot honey on it. Hot, hot honey? Hot honey. Like spicy honey, not temperature honey. Spicy honey. But, but it's not physically hot, no. Chemically hot. hot. So just pepperoni and honey? Yeah. This sounds kind of badass. Is it oh. thick crust or that New York flop? You even have to ask me this question. That's okay, good. I'm, I'm a thick crust guy. I'm yeah. a thick crust guy. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, and I know if they follow you on social media, which you don't even want them to at this point, <laughs> um, you love pizza. So we, we should have known pizza was coming. What are you love. drinking with it? Um, a Hal's seltzer. Which, again, I thought it was pretty genius. Pizza seltzer is pretty damn good. Yeah, dude, it's a great combination. The instant refresh, and then you cheese it back up again, you know? What about dessert? Any dessert? Are you a sweets guy? I'm not a huge sweets guy, but, man, do I just love a good brownie sundae more than anything. Brownie sundae. All right, we're down with it. Yeah. All right, number seven, when you're seven years old, what did you want to be when you grew up? Exactly what I am now. Rock star? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. I was told a story where I have um, – we had this project in second grade, and you had to – do a cardboard cutout of a, of a person and dress them up who you wanted to be in the future. And everybody did astronaut and fireman and policeman. And I just had a guy in jeans and t-shirt and it just said rock on it. And uh, I actually still have this thing. It's actually at my parents' house this day. So I'm happy that I got to, after a, a crazy path of trying to get there, I got to be who I always wanted to be. I take it uh, parents supported the whole way? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Uh, number six, how do you want to end up six feet under? How do you want to die? How do I want to die yeah. on stage, please? Oh, see? Yeah. I've run this past a couple of people, and they're like, hell no, I don't want to traumatize my, my, you know, the patrons. And I was like, no, that's 
you'll never forget you saw your favorite artist go out on stage. Yeah, I mean, if I'm handing out programs to a show as you walk in the door, you can bet something's going to happen at the end. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number five, five figure discount. What's the last thing you stole? What's the what thing I stole? Last thing you stole. Oh, uh, Muse's album, uh, Origin of Symmetry online. Yeah. <laughs> like you're just ripping it from somewhere? Yeah, I just like ripped it from a website when I was in middle school, I think. Well, you on know, LimeWire? I just tweeted out today asking how many people ruined a computer on LimeWire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like a lot of the songs would start playing and then it would go. <laughs> uh, but that was some like distinctly uh, like early 2000 shit as a, little, as a kid. And like, uh, yeah, I, I, I stole that album. I did buy Absolution. Um, and then I also bought many, many tickets and saw them many times live before I ever toured with them. So you've yeah. spent more than you've took. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, number four. Now, here's the deal. I'm changing this for you because I usually ask Mount Rushmore of Little Debbie Snacks. I I've seen you on stage. You're you're in shape. I doubt you're crushing Little Debbie's uh, in your cemetery apartment here. So I'm going to go top four snacks because I doubt you even know what a Little Debbie is. I think it's very Southern. I have no idea what a Little Debbie is. It's a snack cake. Uh, kind of like Hostess, Twinkie, Ho-Ho's, mm -hmm. but it's a more Southern thing. And they have like Nutty Buddies and Oatmeal Cream Pie and Honey Buns and stuff like that. Okay. So I'm going to go just snacks for you. So what is your weakness on snacks? Um, snack weakness. My snacks are not snacks. They're meals. So I'll be walking by a burrito truck and I just ate lunch. I'll get a burrito. So I've got a weakness for slices of pizza. I will walk out of a dinner and, uh, you know, you don't want to like really pig out if you're like meeting up with a friend and you're trying to talk a lot, but right. really inside I'm thinking the entire time while we're catching up, I'm thinking I got to eat. Uh, so I will walk right out of that restaurant and go, ah, man, I had a great night. Great seeing you. Great catching up. And I will turn the corner. I'll go to Joe's pizza on third Avenue. I will eat two slices of pizza. You're so crushing. That's, that's my number one snack. Uh, <laughs> wait, what's it? Let me, what's in the green room? Oh, the green room is pretty boring because we try to stay healthy on tour. So we've got like... Still, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the green room has like, you know, like teas and nuts and like all these like little kind of like healthy things, food specialties, stuff like that. It's the only thing that keeps us remotely healthy on the road. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be doomed. You put anything in front of my face, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> it's game over. Yeah. All right. Uh, number three, three albums on a deserted island. This isn't you saying they're the best albums there's no argument it's just you're stuck with these three albums so what could you listen to forever elvis's prince from another planet live album okay uh, afternoon show not the morning show he's a little looser madison square garden looser. um second would be uh barry gibbs and barbara streisand's duet album called guilty uh Ooh. And then third would be uh, Muse's Absolution. Oh, great album. I was about to say, you got to have some kind of real new rock in there. I figured you would have one. That's yeah. That's a good call. I tried to avoid kind of like the obvious albums in there. You know, I wanted to go from ones that just like hit an emotional note with me, you know? I know you've... Uh... I know you've opened for the Stones among many other people. Did you say you you opened for the you toured with Muse? I did, yeah. How was that? They, I met them a couple of times just at you know just at the deal meet and greet deal. Great guys, got the dog with them the whole time. Uh, how yeah. great was that? Yeah, unbelievable. They say don't meet your idols, uh, but for me that was a rare exception because they were such incredible dudes. And uh, yeah, I just I, I have been in the last row of so many Muse concerts, like in MSG, where the Larry last row, because it's so high up, if you jump high, you could like hit your head on the ceiling. The <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're so far back there. Yeah. And uh, I have so many stories of seeing them live. Like one time I was seeing them in Long Island, I was in middle school and the power went out because the show was so intense. And I looked at my buddy and I was like, this is our chance to, 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 to get out of these awful seats. So it was totally blacked out. We ran all the way down, jumped onto the floor, went to the front row. Lights came back on. We were front and center, had the best show of our lives. Yeah. So, okay, here, here's a thing I have about Muse. You're yeah. going to be the one that answers it for me. 
Okay. I've always thought it wasn't good to sit close to Muse because of their stage show. How was front row, though? Is it still the same experience? Interesting. Uh, you know what? You definitely take in more at the top. But for me at that time, I didn't really care about the production and stuff. <laughs> I just wanted to jump like a moron and be as close to the band as possible. So okay. mission accomplished. No, we've all been there. Yeah, we're all there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I had to sneak that in my, for my own Muse fandom there. Um, all right, number two, as a fan, not as a performer, no open, no work with, whatever the deal, as a fan, first con concert you ever went to and last concert you went to as a fan? Red Hot Chili Peppers at Jones Beach in Long Island was the very first, like, real concert I ever went to oh, uh, with John Frusciante, like, still in the band, and uh, – that was a really unbelievable experience. Like, I didn't really understand, like, what concerts were, you know? And I knew all... So and did knew parents that. take you, friends, or did you go, I need to go see the Chili Peppers? No, I took the bus uh, with my oh, friend. Oh, yeah. I was in seventh grade. And um, it took... It, like, this venue is, like, 18 miles from my house. It took me, like, three and a half hours to get there. You know what I mean? This is, like, a pre-Uber time, obviously. <laughs> but it's, like, it's such an indirect route to get to this place. Um, and then... But my parents would have taken me. I think they may have been busy or something. Um, but you were just like, I'm going to this concert. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the last concert I went to was the Strokes New Year's Eve at the Barclay Center here in Brooklyn. This, so that would have been 2019? Yes. Like, just sitting there being like, 2020 is going to be the best year ever. And then the ball drops. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> little did we know. Little yeah. Why? What happened? <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, and number one, we're going to bring it full circle, back around. If you were a wrestler, who would you be? I, I mean, you've already mentioned Mankind or Undertaker. Is it one of them or is it a wild card? You know what? I'm going to go with an answer that feels uh, it feels kind of lame and might be kind of obvious, but I think of myself as the people's champ. You know what I mean? Okay. So, uh, right, we'll go with The Rock. I have to go with The Rock, you know? Well, he's good on the mic. You're, you gotta be good on the stick. You, you, got, you got the look. You got the hair. He's always got good hair. I'm a man of the people. You know, I I, I believe that in my bones. So I'm I'm all in on that. <laughs> all right. Well, you survived the countdown. Uh, we're excited to get you back out on the road, dude. Hopefully, okay. you will come in the south somewhere whenever you get some dates on the deal and announce those. I was supposed to play Alabama in April of 2020 for the first time. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I never, uh, I never played Alabama. Yeah, we all right. Just remember us. I'll, I'll, I'm coming to Nashville anywhere. Just get, get yeah. within driving distance, and we'll absolutely. Be all right. uh, and I want to hear about Jones Beach because I'm jealous. That's my bucket list. My other bucket list was Red Rocks. I got to go there a couple summers ago, and just looking at pictures online for Jones Beach is absolutely beautiful. You're telling me that you have the most beautiful venue of all time, Red Rocks, built into the natural rock as like this place that's in a marina next to a power plant in Long Island, New York. Yeah, but pictures, it looks amazing. I've never heard anyone say this before, so I, I'm, it's like exciting for me that you like this venue. Yeah. Just seeing the water, it looked, seems like it was awesome. That's cool. It's very cool. I remember one time I saw Mark Hoppus throw a bass into that water. He threw a bass in the water? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's got to be a goal to play there, right? Oh, yeah, there. yeah that, I think that like Nassau Coliseum and Jones Beach – are like up like up there with me for like Madison Square Gardens of the world. Are you gonna throw something in the water? Yeah, probably myself, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is you dying at your show. This is it. You throw, you get hypothermia because now you're in the power plant, radioactive water, and you're dead. This makes a lot of sense. I also used to fish with my dad, like not far from the venue, and we would be like reeling in these fluke. And then there's like a power plant off to your right. And then I would eat the fluke. I never like put two and two together. That's just <laughs> probably not a good idea. Yeah. You know what? That That's the radioactive is creating the cobra inside you. It's really a second human growing inside you. Right it's a superhero origin story, man. I love it. It's great. That's going to be a restaurant in the cobra. Well, that's what yeah. we need. Has, has there not been one, you think? No. I mean, there there's the apex predator and the pit viper and the rattlesnake with stone cold. I, I'm sure somebody's going to call me out there. You know, there's probably one in the 50s or something. And I'm forgetting. Yeah, just wait. But yeah. The wrestling nerds will get all over and just go, duh, there's the Cobra. <laughs> uh, but, but me and you are not remembering it right now. So maybe yeah. that's your song. 
probably some like weird league in like the Pacific Northwest or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> like the All right, Jazz, man. I know you're busy. Uh, we are excited about the new music uh, on the rocket. We're excited that you are hopefully about to drop some new dates and hopefully wherever everybody is, uh, they can check it out. Don't follow him on social media, but if you are, it's I am Des Rocks. Uh, wherever you can get his music, wherever you listen to music, even LimeWire if you want to bootleg it. Since <laughs> Des, man, thank you so much. Uh, I had a blast. Fun to finally talk to you. You've been a fan, like I said, since I heard the first notes on Survivor Series. So I- I'm rooting for you, brother. Thanks for your time, man. I appreciate it.